Okay, so we're going to kick off with some Xbox news. Um, obviously, there was the partner showcase. We'll get to that shortly. But what we're going to be talking about right now is a video produced by um, Austin Evans. He was Ooh. sent by Microsoft all of the new Xbox consoles, or specifically the new Series X consoles. That would be the all-white um, Xbox Series X that uh, has the disk drive uh, strategically removed. Mm. And then there's the two terabyte model, um, which has a nice sparkly new case. Now, in theory, looking at these devices, not much has really changed, right? If you think back to the FTC leak, uh, we had the adorably all digital sort of uh, trash can shaped Xbox. Uh, thankfully, that appears to be like an alternate timeline that never happened. Uh, instead, we have these machines, which are basically variations of a theme. Now, Austin's video was interesting because um, he actually took them apart, or more specifically, took the um, uh, all digital version apart. Uh, there was much hilarity and whooping where he discovered that the missing space for the optical drive was indeed a missing space. I'm not quite sure what they're <laughs> expecting. Mm. Uh, but more interesting was the fact that um, the main boards have completely changed and we now have a six nanometer processor at the heart of the machine, along with paired back cooling. Um, Oliver, did you see that video? What do you think of it? I did. I did. My first impression is uh, finally <laughs> because Sony was shipping six nanometer processors in their consoles two years ago. But Yep. I guess my kind of second thought was that I guess this is the part of the Brooklyn refresh that we saw last year that actually did make it to market. This is like the minimum viable product Brooklyn refresh because you get the uh, you get the lower power consumption, you get a six nanometer processor, you get a motherboard redesign, you also get a revised a thermal assembly. It seems like here, but the actual external design of the unit is identical to before, unless of course you get that disk driveless unit, which does look very slightly different, obviously. Um, but I think it's basically the compelling parts of the Brooklyn upgrade from our perspective are there. And as a, a bonus, they haven't discontinued the disk drive model, which we were concerned about with the Brooklyn refresh because they did not enumerate plans for a disk drive equipped Brooklyn model. And we don't even know if it would have been possible based off the internal layout, right? It might not have been possible to ship a, a true Brooklyn refresh console with a disk drive. And I think this design is probably a bit more practical because it's easier to stack them horizontally <laughs> than the right. Brooklyn console indicated. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Series S fits just perfectly on top of the Series X back there, which is quite a nice, quite a nice little thing for for our purposes at least. Um, but if anything, my my only real kind of insight here is that I'm surprised it's taken Microsoft this long to revise the Series X because the Series X is not a cheap console to make, and going to six nanometers. Scaling back the heatsink, as they appear to have done here, introducing a model without a disk drive for the Series X. Um, those are all things I would have expected earlier in the generation. They're all things that Sony did earlier in the generation. And it seems like if you combine that with some aggressive price cuts, you could have made maybe a bit more of an inroads into Sony's market share this generation. But it kind of seems like Microsoft's general approach with no enhanced console, cutting prices relatively rarely, not revising the console silicon, not revising the console hardware, Perhaps that reflects a level of comfort in their ability to hit consumers across multiple different platforms, or maybe it's just a, a lack of a willingness to throw a lot of money after market share as they've done in the past, and they kind of are resigned somewhat to this position in the market. I don't, I'm not quite sure what it means, but I think this upgrade overall, to me, it does seem a little bit overdue. I'm glad that they're doing it, and I'm glad that they are achieving some power consumption savings. I'm glad they are achieving some bill of materials, likely some bill of materials reductions. But it does seem to be coming a little bit late in the game, four years in, to have your first major console revision when Sony did it in like 2021 the first time around, right? Yeah, there's been several um, uh, revisions of the PlayStation 5. The first one retained the existing 7 nanometer processor, then they moved to 6 nanometer. Uh, now they're doing a pro model. There, there is constant revision there, and it's obviously been slightly slower paced on Xbox, where we've waited a couple of extra years. In fact, we got this uh, question from Degenerative AI. Any idea why it took Microsoft almost four years to do a die shrink for the Series X compared to the circa two years it took Sony? I'd have thought it would have been a higher priority for them, given they had the more expensive die to begin with. Uh, that's a fair point, right? But I think the other thing to bear in mind is that we have practically zero visibility on on cost of materials and you know bill of materials for the whole console. We don't really know exactly what the economic decision was 
and why it was made now rather than two years ago. I can only assume that there is a perfectly good reason for it. And if we look at the actual end product from both Sony and Microsoft, well, Sony actually took the opportunity to produce, uh, to kind of refresh the whole thing, right? We had a smaller, mm -hmm. slightly smaller, not that much smaller console. But for clearly for Microsoft, it's been less of a priority. They decided not to use the six nanometer opportunity to actually produce, you know, a revised console in the way that they did with Xbox, uh, sorry, Xbox One S, that's the thing. So I can only assume that we just don't have visibility on why, why that is the case. I mean, we often look at things and think, hey, you know, six nanometer, it's going to be cheaper than seven nanometer. You know, it's, it's obvious. Why aren't they doing it? Well, that's the thing. We just don't really know. But we must assume that Microsoft isn't just throwing money away for the sake of it. Um, John, do you have any particular thoughts about this? Because I guess from your perspective, it's there's just not really much of interest here at all. Well, there is. So obviously, at one point, they clearly had planned a refresh with a visual update to the hardware, and they opted not to go in that direction. But seeing this here, to me, makes me think that perhaps we are simply edging closer to whatever they have envisioned for the next generation. You know what I mean? Like, maybe they right. found it not viable to actually or worthwhile to produce a visually updated new version of the machine uh, because they have other plans in the works that may hit sooner than we'd expect, maybe. Okay. But, beyond, but beyond that, though, I would also say that less than the PlayStation 5, the, the original Xbox Series X design is actually quite good. Uh, it's really good, actually, I would say. It's a really nicely built machine and one that I'm not sure necessarily needed a visual update. Whereas the original Xbox One was largely derided at the time of release, right? It was considered big, cheap, you know, we call it the VCR for a reason. Uh, the Xbox One S gave the brand like a much needed sort of breath of fresh air, right? Where it was just a, yep. an attractive design uh, that would certainly help move additional units. And then they leveraged that for the Xbox One X, of course, following a similar design language. To me, this just feels like, well, this this was not necessarily a priority in terms of like updating anything on this current xbox it was more like i guess it just made sense to do six nanometer at some point and just keep that ball rolling but i don't know when i look at this i just think they're really like they they've got to be winding up for something else rather than continuing the xbox series line like i don't feel like xbox series is necessarily what they view as their future at this point. And I think they've resigned themselves to the fact that whatever's next is their next is what they really want to take the big shot on. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, thinking back, I mean, um, I've met the Xbox sustainability team, or at least a couple of members of the sustainability team, and um, they're making genuine efforts to reduce power consumption. And they're doing it in software, basically, by, um, you know, for example, uh, Fortnite has had dynamic resolution scaling right. uh, bounds paired back simply because they couldn't really tell the difference, but you could tell the difference in terms of power consumption. Um, and the concept that they would put out a six nanometer box, which would bring power consumption down. Well, according to Austin Evans here, who did, a, I've got to say, he did a pretty good job on this. You know, he measured the power consumption of the new unit versus the old unit, seeing the same similar 10 to 15% power savings that the PlayStation 5 um, revision, 6 nanometer revision had, that it didn't really say anything about it. It's, it's kind of like a complete sort of mm. mystery. You know, it's only because Austin took the machine apart that we know about this at all. Um, so that that's slightly odd. Power, power consumption then, I'm sure it was not, that, that was clearly the main focus, I'd say. Right. Power consumption, and I'm assuming, you know, um, as far as I'm aware, TSMC, the chip fabricator, they expected all of their seven nanometer customers to move to six nanometers. Six. I think it's the, the same way for these, even. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's there is a bit of uh, mystery surrounding this. We got this uh, question from James Prendergast. Regarding the six nanometer Xbox Series APUs, I'm looking at the power savings and they appear similar to the 10 to 15% that was seen for the PS5 1200 model. I'm a little surprised the power savings are so similar. I would expect a larger chip with a mm. wider GPU would have greater savings than the PS5's APU. Um, it has got lower clock speeds though. That's something to bear in mind. Um, that's probably the reason why. Yeah. I know that this change allows cost savings on each unit manufactured from 
for Microsoft, but it's a little sad to think that they couldn't have instead boosted the CPU frequency by 100 to 200 megahertz or something similar. Um, fair point, but you know, if you're going to differentiate the consoles, um, that probably creates more headaches uh, for QA, that kind of thing. And also it means, um, well, you know, it's it, it's a lot of effort for something that's just not going to be noticed by the end user, uh, typically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In terms of the uh, the die um, conversation uh, that degenerative AI was talking about, having a more expensive die to begin with, um, one thing that was lacking from the Austin Evans video was actually a die measurement for the new mm. uh, processor. Um, but I did speak to Austin after the event because in the video you can actually see him measuring it. He just doesn't give the measurement. Um, so I did ask him for his measurements. And, um, yeah, I mean, he measured the old SOC and the new SOC. And uh, the dimensions for the old one were 22 by 9 millimeters versus, uh, sorry, um, by 16 by 6. That would give a die size of 380 square millimeters. But we actually know that the Series X's die size is 360. So it, it just goes to show how difficult it is to do a die measurement generally. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how big is the package versus the actual yeah. uh, logic. Um, he also measured the new um, SOC, uh, 20 mil by 16.5. So essentially very similar height, but it's kind of like being sort of drawn in on the X axis. Now, if we actually assume that those measurements were taken in the same way by the same piece of equipment, and then look at the differential there and apply it to the official's die size of the seven nanometer chip, um, I would get a die size of the new model by uh, for about 312.5 millimeters square. Um, but the actual measurement that Austin produced was uh, 330. <laughs> mm. But yeah, it, applying the rules of like, you know, the proportionate difference to the actual die size, you get 313. So hopefully that, hope, well, hopefully that will give some answers to people. But yeah, curious thing. Um, Austin didn't have a Series S to test, but I fully expect that that has also had a die shrink as well. Uh, that was in the FTC document. Makes sense. And in the FTC document, the unit was exactly the same pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, they seem to have adopted that strategy for the entire line. But it's an interesting point that you've got there, John, that you know, essentially they don't really see any kind of marketing win in producing a revised yeah. model. And maybe they are looking to... Um, bring forward the hardware because the same FTC leak was talking about a 2028 um, launch. Mm -hmm. um, and to bring that forward would require, you know, quite a lot uh, of effort. Quite I'm a sure. lot of effort. Indeed. The thing is though, is like when you look at what Sony <laughs> did with the slim, uh, that ended up being kind of part of their master plan with the PS5 pro, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where the, the detachable disc drive thing, the the plates that can be used between the the pro and the slim model like they were clearly basically setting up this slightly new design language with that unit to then roll it out to the pro so there was like a real market purpose to it where here i feel like it's pretty obvious like this is this is as far as xbox series goes like it, it yep. will end with these machines and then whatever comes next will come next and be a different thing I think yeah. something else we we should probably talk about, Oliver, is the uh, the price point. Um, obviously, the FTC link uh, leak was talking about the adorably all digital uh, mm. Xbox Series X for the same great price, <laughs> right? Um, but we're effectively looking at well, that was no for a two terabyte model. Cuts. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That that's that's curious, isn't it? Obviously, that hasn't come to pass. The um, two terabyte machine is six hundred dollars, which I think is, you know, I think at this point, can we accuse Sony of overpricing the PS Five Pro if nobody <laughs> is able to actually cost reduce the base mm. models? I think it's just the reality of modern economics with this stuff. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that Sony and Microsoft would both love to reduce the price of these machines, right? They're not doing this just out of pure greed because this does have an effect on market share. Uh, but clearly there are other factors at work here that are preventing them from being able to lower this price to a reasonable level. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think here that Sony is generally more aggressive with Microsoft in discounting their consoles at various points yeah. in the year a good point. quite heavily. And I think that $600 price for the two terabyte model, although that is 
$600 for a two terabyte model with a disk drive. So it isn't quite apples to apples there in terms of the comparison with Brooklyn. But certainly Brooklyn, just in its design language and what they were doing with it in the, the same price for two terabytes, even though the, the disk drive was a bit more of an aggressive push here. And yeah, I mean, I think there are kind of two ways you can go with console hardware this generation. You can kind of aggressively discount and lose margins, lose money in every console, or you can kind of keep the price the same and then raise it over time, which is not a great outcome either, right? So kind of a rock and a hard place there. I will also say that the uh, the new two terabyte model, I'm not sure what to think of that sort of paint design, the starry, the star field looking design that they have going on. To me, it looks like somebody was doing painting around their, their living room and happened to splatter <laughs> white paint all over their Xbox. You know what I mean? Like it, it's right. uh, when, when you see the close ups of it in Austin's video, it's, it really does just like little, little paint blotches. It's a little strange. Yeah, it's not particularly exciting, is it? I would yeah. rather a white version of the disk drive Xbox Series X was, was available. I don't like that white seems to mean no disk drive in the Xbox lineup. <laughs> I like I like Xbox white design consoles. language. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, okay. Um I mean I guess there is one other takeaway. When the FTC leak happened, I mean it looked like this massive reveal of Microsoft's plans. Phil Spencer came out and said, Well, those are the old plans. He was don't right. pay them any mind. And I guess my reaction to that is, well, you know, to actually change direction so dramatically is uh, is a huge undertaking. I didn't quite believe that it would happen, but obviously it has. So yep. <laughs> yep. there we go. <laughs> One um, final shout out, though. I just want to say Austin Evans, super cool dude. We've gotten to talk to him many times. Very, very nice guy. Does awesome videos. Yeah, so check out this video by all means if you haven't seen it, because you know yep. obviously he did the he did the heavy lifting here. 